Recently, we kicked off our virtual speaker series, a new decade of opportunities, which allows participants to hear from mining companies about projects and their needs near to long term. Our guest on one of our speaker series was Engel Gold Ashanti Columbia, and they talked about the Quebradona Copper Gold Project. What stood out to me was this biodynamic park and that they are going to build it around the mine at the same time. I wanted to learn more. And who better to speak about this than Felipe Marquez, the country president of Anglo Gold Ashanti, Colombia. We also talked about illegal mining in Colombia and how they are addressing that issue. So let's dig in now. Hi, Felipe. Welcome to The Dig. It's a real pleasure to have you here. Hi, Ryan. It's a pleasure for me being here with you. Excellent. So tell us, uh, provide us a little bit of an overview on, on the project, just kind of to get everybody an understanding of where it is and what it's all about. Look, uh, the, the Quebradona project, uh, first of all, it's a, it's a copper mining project. People, some people believe it's a gold project, and that's why we, even from the name, we change it to Quebradona Copper Mine. We started like that. Uh, it's a project that is located in Jericó. Jericó, it's in the, in the southwest of Antioquia. Antioquia is a region in Colombia, and it's maybe the, the, most, uh, 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 the most important region for entrepreneurship and for, uh, for mining as well in, in, in the country. It's located in a, in a region where mining is not uh, the normal uh, activity. So it's a, it's a region that uh, has normally uh, known, been known for tourism, for a little bit of agriculture, and, uh, and uh, now for the only saint, uh, the Catholic saint that Colombia has, that is Mother Laura. Right. Wow. Okay. So what kind of mine, is it going to be an underground or open pit operation? It will be an underground mine. We are thinking uh, it's going to be built uh, using the sub-level caving method. Mm. It's, a, it's a copper mine that will be producing around uh, 3 billion pounds in 23 years of production. But it also has a little bit of gold and, and silver. Mm. Uh, on the 23 years, we believe that Quebrana will also be producing 1.5 million ounces of gold and around 22 million ounces of silver. So uh, at the end, uh, our final product is it's a copper concentrate, copper gold, silver concentrate that we will be exporting. Not sure if through the Pacific or through the Atlantic, depending on the agreements that we do with the different buyers. Okay. Okay. So yeah, it'll be taken care of. The final product will be created somewhere else. Exactly. Exactly. Okay. Okay. So in, in terms of status, where are you in terms of when you're, you know, what do you need to do to start breaking ground and when would that happen? Yeah, this, this project started its exploration uh, programs almost 12 years ago. So it's been it's taking us a long time. Uh, at the beginning, we were looking for, for gold, but finally we found uh, a copper gold deposit. Uh, we've been doing the pre-feasibility study through uh, 2017 until uh, last year, on last year on February. And now we are in the feasibility study. We should be uh, uh, finishing by February 2021. And we and we're going to the board uh, for for discussion on approval or not, depending what the board decides on May 2021. From a licensing perspective, we are in the middle of the two licenses that we require: the environmental license and the mining license. Uh, last week, we finished a two-week uh, hearing with the uh, environmental authority. Uh, they already did the visits. They already received our EIA, and they asked us for for 180 points that we need to. Uh, uh, explain better or uh, give more information uh, and that's absolutely normal in the process we already licensed this company AGA already licensed in Colombia Gramalote so it's normal to, to, to be in the stage where we are we expect to, to have 60 days in order to present everything to ANLA that is the environmental authority and then they will conduct a public hearing and then hopefully in May we will have the environmental license uh, to take it to the board the mining license is very similar uh, we have 600 requirements on mining, a lot of different things, and we are discussing with authority. The only difference is we only have 30 days. Instead of 60, we have 30 days. So we should be finishing this uh, by the end of December and, and perhaps having the, the mining license a little bit earlier. Okay, so you, you know, with board approval and the licensing, you would, could start this project or start breaking ground, as we call it, by the second half of uh, 2021? That's completely right. So our plans are 
if we have both licenses we will, and, the, and the feasibility study approved by the board, we take it to investment decision in May. And if granted, we'll start in June to do all the earthworks that are required. It's a long a building time. And we expect that Quebrana will only be producing in 2025. Okay. The reason for this is that uh, to access the ore body, we need uh, uh, to make uh, three tunnels, six kilometers each. And that's what takes us a uh, two plus two years and a little bit of months. And then we start the mining uh, build, uh, build and then the construction. And then we start the infrastructure con construction around 2023. That's why we can only start producing by 2025. Okay, understood, great. Well, I, you have a very unique, uh, or at least I think it's a very unique approach here with this uh, uh, biodiversity park. And, and I love, you, you have a, a term called mining with purpose. So I, I'm assuming this biodiversity park, park is a kind of a key piece to that. Can you share, share a little bit about what that all is? Yeah, definitely. The first thing is that uh, uh, when, when we started this process, when we, when we got real with Quebradona, we only had 32% of, of support in the community. We measure uh, every quarter. A third party makes a survey, uh, 360 polls. Jericho is a 12,000 uh, uh, people city or, or municipality. So we started trying to understand how could we improve. And we came and we came into the conclusion that we needed to make something very different. So we placed innovation into the center of us. And the, the first point of innovation was saying, okay, we need a purpose. Why are we doing this? Why are we walking this path? Mm -hmm. uh, and, and we said, okay, let's define our purpose from, an, from an, a Colombia a group team. And we define the purpose as, as a transforming the mineral resource that is underground into economical, social and environmental wealth. So that, that's our purpose. And then we say, okay, how? How can we get into that purpose? So we, uh, we made a very big change in the way we uh, relate with the communities. And we say, we're not going to continue uh, uh, discussing things with the communities with third parties. We're not using the NGOs. We're not going with the politicians. We're not going with the experts. We're not going with the consultants. We're gonna go and discuss things with the community directly. So we created a program that has already had 3000 people participating directly on that program. And uh, uh, around 300 uh, hearings, we started with one or two people arriving into the hearings. Now we have 80, 90, sometimes 100. And, uh, and in those discussions, one of the things that uh, 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 rose up was the importance of landscaping the community said, we are not afraid of the mine, but we don't want to lose the beauty of our landscape. So, so we said, okay, how, how can we propose something new in, in our innovation in, in environment? And we said, what happens if we, if we do something very similar? We brought the concept from, from Canada, from Canada, mm -hmm. Vancouver, the Stanley Park, where you have, where you have a cement plant, a mine, inside a park. Right. So we say, hey, why can't we have a copper mine inside a park? Yeah. And the concept started there, and we brought a, a new people into the team for discussing. We, all, we, we always do these things with engineers. Mm -hmm. We brought architects also. And we said, okay, we need this thing to be good, but beautiful as well. And the architects uh, started designing, and at the end, we created a concept that is the biodynamic park. And the biodynamic part is called biodynamic because it's going to change within the time. And we brought a new concept that it was, we're going to close the mine from the day one of construction. So we start building the park first, and the next day we start building the mine. So at the end, everything goes at the same time. And when you have the closure of the mine, you already have your park finished. So the park starts with 10 hectares before the mine starts, and it goes to 600 hectares. And those 600 hectares of park are gonna connect 2,500 hectares of ecosystems that we already agreed with the, with the environmental authorities. So at the end, exactly the day that you finish Quebradona, you already have your closure in place. You don't need to wait for something. And people will see the landscape and the beauty of the park. This is gonna be a park open to the public, operated by a third party that is an expert 
in operating parks. And people will be able to visit our mine as part of that experience. I think it's a, it's a, it's a brilliant approach. It's something I really haven't, haven't heard about before. And it's always nice to hear that some of that concept came from, uh, you know, came, came from Canada, uh, yeah, spark, uh, spark of uh, innovation, if you will. So, well, that's a brilliant. So, you know, I, with, with regards to that, there, I have to ask you, there, there's a, there seems to be, and it must be really important, especially to a region like this, you know, the misunderstanding of what they hear or perceive from illegal mining versus a company like yourself. And, and, you know, what, you know, what can you say that sets you apart from that? To, to, it sounds like you've, get, you've grown that comfort with the, with the community there, but what, what, do you, what could you say about that? Uh, this is a very good point because it was part of the discussion with the community in these uh, 300 hearings that we've had with them. Uh, and the first uh, thing that I want to say is, uh, with our journey, we are today in 72% of acceptance. Yeah. of the project. Only 10% of the people say we don't want it and 18% are still in this neutral area saying we're not sure. Mm -hmm. And uh, this was one of the biggest points of discussion with them. Uh, artisanal miners, illegal mining, what's the situation with a project there? The first thing is that uh, because we are we're mining copper and it's going to be a copper gold silver concentrate, we don't have a, 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 a challenge with artisanal miners in that area. The deposit is, it's, it's a large porphyry, but it's a porphyry that is, a, a, the top of the porphyry will be around 400 to 450 meters above, uh, sorry, below the ground. And from the side, six kilometers. That's why we need to put the tunnels. And the final product uh, that we will be delivering is a concentrate. So the concentrate itself will not be uh, useful for anyone except for us uh, exporting it to a refinery. So, so we don't have the risk there, there of artisanal or illegal mining. But let me, let me put that discussion with the other project that we have in Antioquia, that is the Gramalote project. It's gold, open pit, uh, and we have a partner that is managing the project, a, a Canadian partner, it's B2Gold. They're doing a fantastic job managing that, that project. And we've agreed with them on how are we gonna approach the artisanal miners and the illegal miners. And the solution is illegal miners are not miners. Illegal is criminality. That's the problem of the police. And that's an agreement that we have with, with, the, with the government. And they have a police groups there that control the, the, the illegal, the criminal miners. But the artisanal miners, they have a right. They've been there for generations. That's the way they, they can live. And we need to give them the hand. And we did. And what we created was a, a program in which we said, okay, come with us. We'll give you part of our tenements, even part of our geology plan. We'll tell you where the ore is located so that you can make. We'll teach you and pay for, the, for, the, for, the, for all the plans that you require to make up a mine, an artisanal mine, but that is safe, not, a, not, not an unsafe mine as they were mining. And now we're going to the next step and it's uh, uh, helping them fund a community plant. The, 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 the situation here is that the, the middleman is the one that receives the big money. Normally it's illegal. So the miners receive very small amount because they are forced to sell their ore to that middleman that processes uh, and produces finally the gold and uses mercury and makes the contamination and hurts the environment. If you're able to close the, the circle and give them a plant, artisanal plant, where they are not using mercury, where, where, they, where they are preserving the environment, where they get licenses from the government, where they use the safety parameters that are required, then at the end, they're gonna receive 10 times more for every ounce of gold they are producing today. That gives them their money to maintain the system and to bring more miners into there. And then now we have a, I think it's 200 or 300 miners already legalized, formalized. And we have all the others willing to come into this program. So they themselves are also combating the illegal activity. Then you don't need the police. So it's a, a virtuous circle. So uh, my last message here would be, we don't have the problem in Quebradona. 
but we have the expertise on how to solve it, and I think it can be solved uh, properly and, and, and socially. Excellent. Well, I think that's, 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 the new, that's the new future, I think, of mining, and I think we're showing this is a good example of how, how it's going to improve and be more sustainable and safer for those communities that do that, uh, that activity. So it's an exciting project. You have Quebradana. So uh, look forward to seeing uh, uh, what, how it progresses. And so I want to thank you very much for taking the time with us uh, to be on the day. Thank you very much for inviting me. It was a big pleasure for me. Okay, take care. And thank you for joining us on The Dig. And remember, subscribe to our YouTube channel to get easy access to all our episodes. And sign up to our virtual speaker series. Right now, we are conducting our Latin America Fall Session. And I want to thank Cypher Environmental for being a gold sponsor to this session. So until next time, take care and stay safe.